So um, what we're going to diagram here is this idea. As things move away from us, they appear to get smaller. To demonstrate that, here's a photograph of some idiot we know and love um, out riding his motorcycle in a blizzard. And what we have here is a minivan that's this high, a motorcycle with a sidecar and a crazy wife this high, and a mailbox this high. Now, in a flat space, that would mean that this mailbox is 10 feet tall or this minivan is about 12 inches tall. Now that's a real mini minivan and it's not that small. We all know it. And that's the reason it works this way is the mailbox is closer to us than the motorcycle, than the minivan, right? So if we move along and look at something else, we can look at something like this. My yard gives us something that's a bit more geometric and a bit more based upon um, shape and easier to diagram. So here it is. I turned the diagram on for this. What you have are the uh, lines in the pool, the lines in the fish pond, the lines in the studio building, all converging at this one point. This is basic one point linear perspective. There's a blue line running across here. That is my eye level. And the vanishing point will always appear to be here on your eye level at the spot you are looking at. Now, this also aligns very nicely because I was nice and stood right in the middle of the pool on the far side and shot straight down the whole tunnel. And so you get a nice geometric arrangement. Life doesn't always work out that way. Be aware of that. Gets a little sloppier if we go into nature like this. And of course, this is a really fine example of the, uh, the regression in scale, but it's also pretty hard to draw because, you know, these trees have all these goofy leaves and there's all this grass. So there's a solution to this, just so you know. All you have to do is wait for the snow to fall, and then this thing becomes really easy to draw. Yeah, look at that. So what you see here are trees that recede in space and a horizon line. And these trees are 90 years old, but they've been pruned enough to be very similar in scale. And so they lend themselves pretty nicely, but you know, after 90 years, they grow in funny shapes and everything doesn't line up really pretty. Um, this tree here appears to be a little bit out of line and this one here, but that's the way life is, right? You want a nicer view? Try this. This also diagrams something else we talked about last week. And that's the idea of atmospheric perspective. You can see it really clearly here in the fog as things disappear in space, they get lighter, fuzzier, move to this gray, right? But the linear perspective is also there. And so there you go. You can see it yet again, right? All right. And even here with my son working on the boat. Um, we'll turn those off for a minute. You can see me looking straight down. I'm looking right to whoever took the photograph. I think my wife took this photograph. Um, boom. Little guy now, it doesn't really work this way because that little guy now is like six feet tall and he looks down on me. But there you are. All right, crew. This is a demonstration of uh, one point perspective, which assumes a couple of very simple things. Um, it assumes that, for example, we are looking at the front of something and not at an angle. It works best for that sort of viewpoint. Um, there are a handful of things to recall. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through them very simply. I'm going to use some colored pencils here to make the diagramming much more exciting and, and visible. So I'm going to use a blue pencil to mark some structural lines that, that will come into play. First thing is what we call the horizon line or vanish. Or, I guess it's, the best way to put it is horizon line or eye level. Now, because we call it the eye level, people tend to draw it here in the middle of the page. If we call it the horizon line, they tend to move it just about anywhere and usually down here. I will explain. <clears throat> the 
the horizon line itself is your eye level. when you're looking parallel to the ground plane. So if you stand up, hold your head up, and look straight ahead, then the horizon line and the eye level are the same. If, however, you start looking down or looking up, the horizon line moves in a chord, and that's where it might actually be down here. I'm gonna draw it at the middle because of what I'm about to demonstrate. All right. The second thing you need to understand is that in a typical one-point perspective system, the vanishing point we're going to use, and that is we've discussed regression and scale, and here it is. The vanishing point we're going to use, the place where things seem to vanish to, is always in the center. Now, there is no legitimate reason why you can't draw it way over to the left or way over to the right. It, it, it just means you're going to be drawing the right half or left half of the view of the field of vision as it stands. Or you perhaps just have a row of things that are running in one direction or another. And I showed you some of those photographs in the orchard. Um, so for right now, we're just going to diagram this way. And this is going to be a quick diagrammatic drawing. Um, we're going to start with the brick itself. And the brick itself, let's do it this way. Laying on its back. All right. We're going to sight measure the first two lines so we know the rough scale of the brick. All right. And I'm going to do it in a quick sketch format, not in its final format. Um, using the blue pencil to mark that. I'm going to take a red pencil so you can see this. And we're going to draw from this point, this point, and this point to this vanishing point. I'm not using a ruler just because it clutters up my desk, but ordinarily you could use anything that's a straight edge. And remind me later to teach you how to do things like draw a straight line or how to draw curved line if you need one there. That was nice and sloppy. See, I needed to mess one up just so you could see me mess one up. All right. All right. So it runs something like that. This is the regression in scale, the receding of size or proportion as they move away from you. Now, we're going to sight measure then the next line. And that's going to be and I'm going to set it up right about here. And we'll do a sight measuring demonstration in class as well. Or a vertical line from just measuring this distance. You measure it off and mark it. And then a horizontal line across here. So these lines are always parallel. And these lines are all parallel. Does that make sense? They're parallel to one another. Their geometry class from eighth grade, right? All right, so that sets up the structure. Now, if I want to simply close off the brick, I can take my pencil and close the brick off, right? This is the basic shape of the brick. Right? All right, now, if I want to mark something in the center of the brick, let's say, I can draw an X through here, and wherever that intersection is, that is the middle of the block. I can draw then a parallel line here, which would give me a midpoint on each side, right? Why does this matter? Allow me to explain. <clears throat> if I mark the center of each of the bricks, I get a circle. If it's a perfect square, I get a circle. In the case of this, I will get something that is a bit more elliptical because it's not a perfect square. All right. But a circle or an ellipse touches at the center points of the 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 rectangle or square in question, all right? 
in a circle, the radius is a consistent distance all the way around. The minute we go to an ellipse, this is a receding and increasing and decreasing and increasing radius. All right. We understand how to do it standing up. We also understand how to do it in perspective. Watch this. I have the center points. I have all I need is one center point, really. And I can draw a vanishing line through, comes to here, find that center point, find that center point. The center point of the four edges are now in place. Play, play connect the dots. trying to create something that has a consistent curve to it and it'll look something like that and I can take a nice dark pencil and, and do something like that and I've got my circle in space all right that's how it works that's all there is to it it's very exciting one point perspective now I'm drawing a brick if my brick has three holes in it, finding the, breaking this up into thirds is a lot of work. Just a whole lot of work. However, breaking it up into thirds as we start, and by drawing cubes is not, and I'm going to draw really fast here, I could do it like this. Give me a cube. And I'm going to do this because it teaches you how to expand a pattern in space. All right. And I'm going to find the middle is a measurement across here. And I can do this. And the middle is a measurement across here. And I can do this, right? So I have this. I have this. And I can do that. And now I know everything I need to know in order to create multiple units because... If I draw a diagonal from one corner through the center line and the next line, I find the intersection and extend that, I find the intersection of that unit. So what I have now is, I'm going to make some dots here, you can see, I have one line, two lines, because these lines are going to get closer as they move off into space, right? So if I run through here and through here, a straight line, going to get a little closer, right? And then I can do the same thing from here to here. And they'll get a little closer. And I can do the same thing again. And they're going to get a little closer. You see how this works? So I can create patterns that do something like this, too. Bear in mind, and I'm not using a ruler. I'm just being sloppy here rather than precise, but you can see how close those come together, right? You can now see how you would draw a tile floor and a whole lot of other things. If I use that same square, I can draw the tile and, you know, I can extend here and extend this in. So if I find the middle here, I can come from here through there, hit this here, and that's where the next line comes through. And I just drill the tile, right? I just drew a whole series of tiles, right? I can go from here to here and come over like that. And it turns out it's pretty close to even there. And so I get a tiny little bit hanging off of there, but I get the tile on the floor. Now, as our brick goes, you can then work from one vertical, two vertical, three vertical, four verticals. And I have four, three units now in space, which I can find the center to, right? I, I got to keep switching pencils so you can tell what lines are what. I've got my three centers. And of course, if I know where the center is, I know where the center of the vertical is too, right? And so then I can do a full circle here or I can break this down into quarter units and find the square in the middle here, right? And then circle around something like this. And it keeps those circles in play, but they go almost flat as we move into space. Okay? That's it, man. 
If you want to, now that helps you envision how the brick is shaped, but of course there's going to be irregularities and changes and the brick, maybe the brick has that broken end on this end, which means I have parts that come out here like so, and this whole side's in shade, and suddenly this whole thing is gorgeous, right? Ah, Chuck, great, we got a brick in space. Uh, the brick goes like that, and it comes off like this, and it's broken off and curved here, and there's way, there's supposed to be a little dent in here like that, which does this, and we get some shading here, we get some broken stuff hanging off here like that, right? And we get some divots coming in here, and it's not quite perfect there either. There you go, maybe there's a crack run in it. Okay, there we are. One incredibly simple brick. Done.